Welcome to the Life After Life podcast, where we explore our soul's physical and non-physical journey. I'm Majana. Let's discuss angels, guides, and loved ones from the other side. Hello, everybody. I hope you are having a beautiful fall day, and we have company in the room. (laughs) When you say fall, I just emailed Fred Dodson this afternoon, and he is uh, in spring. Yeah, northern <laughs> hemisphere. Well, so a lot of y'all are, too, so sorry That's about true. that. That's true, see? So those of you down below the equator, howdy. <laughs> yeah, and happy spring. Well, oh, you know, I love it, love it so much when people email in with questions and podcast topics. So today, let's talk about... How much, if any, do our personalities change from one lifetime to the next? And how do they email in these topics? Get us at Majana at LifeAfterLifeRadio.com. Or on social media at? On Facebook, we are Life After Life. We have a a closed group. Just hit it, answer a couple questions, give us a review on iTunes or whatever format you listen to. We'd be glad to have you in the group. Love it. And we are working on getting social media savvy. So, uh, <laughs> Majana's doing so much great work. <laughs> oh, kudos Instagram. to you! Golly, yeah. so uh, soon, soon there will be active Instagram stuff. <laughs> All right, what do you think about lives and personalities? Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, right. So what's the whole purpose, anyway, of multiple lives? Let's just kind of start and look at this logically. Why would we come back life after life? To grow from a soul perspective. And would we be able to grow if we never changed? Uh, I vote no. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I think that's the whole, that might even be the definition of growth is change, right? Well, I'm looking at it from, an, it's a great question. Great yeah, question. Yeah, love this. So are we kind of typically the same personality? And in looking at it from astrology, I've been narrating, as you well know, this audio book for Steve Forrest, who walks through the, the changes from one sign to the next. Basically, you know, just think of an astrological wheel, just working your way around it. And each little sector presents different challenges and opportunities to grow in different ways. So that's where I'm thinking, yes, definitely, not only is this life a progression even within that context, but when we come back that there would be different configurations for sure. And we see those clues to that, right, in our nodes, north and south node. Yeah, and I think that unresolved personality issues can carry forward too. So you know, take, for example, if there's unresolved anger... That could certainly come in. And there comes karma. For sure. We've talked about that before and probably will revisit that. That's a pretty deep topic as well. With your personality, you know, there's like Thomas was talking about astrology. There are also the Akashic records, which could give you some really, well, not glimpses. If you can enter the Akashic record your own My understanding is you don't even have to go into the library to access your own record. And if you do that, seeking wisdom and all, you know, for the right reasons, that it's not all that difficult to do to access your own record. You can also do past life regressions. I mean, to really get a hold of this and find out what you were like, We have a few different modalities, which I love because that's what we're finding through this whole thing. All these amazing tools that we have and don't even know about. You know what I'm regretting? (laughs) See, this is my warped mind. I'm 60. All right. I'm not. I don't know how many. (laughs) Yeah, I just just had a birthday. I don't know how many clicks of the calendar are left. I'm hoping 35 or 40. Okay. But at some point this incarnation will be complete. And what I'm regretting, I've narrated 25 amazing audio books for Fred Dodson. I've learned all this astrology. I'm working with one of the top astrologers in the world. I don't want to close the chapter on that knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Know? I, want, I want to leave so much material behind from Thomas and Majana that when we come back, all anywhere in the world where we come back, that we trip over ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 
<laughs> yeah, our intention is going to be, gosh, this stuff looks really familiar. This really resonates. <laughs> my legacy or what I'm going to ask you or my kids to do is I keep my podcasts up, please. <laughs> so I want to come back and find them again. <laughs> oh, what a hoot. It's, it's like going to uh, high school, college, medical school, getting a Ph.D. after that, and then all of a sudden getting total amnesia. Yes. It's like, what all that time? It's all a little unfair. accumulated yeah. knowledge. It's like, I don't want, and you know what? To that effect, I think that that knowledge, again, this is the journey we're on, that that knowledge is to me going to be like a slingshot that is just going to catapult and propel into the next journey. It, so it yes. will not be lost. You know what? And I think that's exactly true. So if we look at, so think your personality right now. Your past lives, especially maybe whatever, um, what, whatever issues, whatever growth opportunities and lessons that you're working on now, maybe came from one lifetime or it could be multiple lifetimes. And you carried traits or experiences forward into this one to help you resolve it or gain a different perspective or greater knowledge, whatever the case may be. So I think we do come back with very, I mean, it can be similar personalities or very different. This is, I think this is a great way to look at it. How many people have you heard of that have had a past life regression or a reading and they were told, oh yeah, you were somebody famous, right? Okay, there cannot be a hundred people that were, um, you know, Ale and anybody, anybody great, Cleopatra or Alexander the Great. One person was, one soul was, but I wonder how many people have been told that they were that great person. <laughs> Probably quite a few. Right? How many people have been told, oh, you know what? You were, um, you were not a good person. Actually, you were a murderer. <laughs> Does anybody want to walk around with that badge? And yet... We live the gamut. And I'm not saying in this lifetime you should look at somebody that has committed murder intentionally and so forth and say, oh, well, you know, they're just fulfilling their destiny or their life purpose. Well, yes, they are. And consequences and universal law all plays into that. It's all love-based. So when you come into this lifetime, right, with your soul pod, good chance that you've had other lifetimes with close people in your family, you have been different roles with each other. Maybe this time you're a parent, last time you were a child. This time, whoever you're married to maybe was a good friend or a child or some other configuration there. It's very dynamic and always changing. We just, on the other side, have this great vision because the Akashic Records are right there. We have complete memory of every lifetime, everything we've ever done. And you tailor this lifetime, this personality, some of these experiences to help you grow and learn your lessons this time around. Yeah. And, you know, even thinking about what is the soul personality like? Think about when we transition to the non-physical. In other words, if you had a little bit of a shortness, abruptness to you, would you still have that? Uh, my experience is yes. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> yeah, so when you're disincarnate, whatever, that piece of your soul maintains that personality. So if you have a family member that you did not particularly get along with in this lifetime, and then they die, I've seen so many people have all this deep regret and remorse, and all of a sudden that person is... A saint in their eyes and you know oh I'm so sorry they were such a great person no they weren't <laughs> don't let just the lack of physicality confuse what's going on you stay the same person you just don't have a body now the advantage they have is they understand they they have the wisdom of that veil being removed so they can see the purpose for things and they understand the layers and the purpose so that gives them a little bit of a foot up on you maybe, but the personality is still there. So in a podcast a while back, I talked about being able to, you know, get really close to a mirror and just kind of stare at yourself, like maybe between the eyes or where your third eye would be. 
and relax into that and you can see the physical version of yourself in previous lives and even change gender. You can, that's pretty freaky, but it works. You can even do that with a partner. You can sit very close with a partner and look at each other in the same way and relax. And you can see maybe some other lives that you've had together, see that person morph into the person they were with you when you were with them before. So as we can kind of use some of these techniques to access what we looked like physically, we also have tools to access our personalities. But why would we want to do that? Would there be any good reasons? Really, and I think this is great advice. I read this um, looking at the Akashic Records, and I thought, wow, that is probably the best advice I've heard, is why would you want to study this only if it's going to be meaningful in what you're doing right now? Now, that's the same way I feel about past, past life regressions or any of this stuff. It's all about educating and becoming the better person. You know, one of the pitfalls or dangers that we all are exposed to or subject to is putting things outside of ourselves. The real work and the answers are within. Absolutely. So dealing with things like past life regression, Akashic records, you have to do it in the context of that you're owning your own stuff internally first and through some kind of an internal prompt, motivation, um, guidance, that it's prompting you to go deal with this issue that might be outside of yourself, but not to use it as a crutch. Yes. And I think the universe helps us. It protects us against ourselves <laughs> in those situations. So if you, let's say that you were saying, oh, I want to go check out the Akashic Records and find out something about somebody. Chances are the universe is not going to let you do that. You're just going to hit a hit a wall. You know, your intention and your heart has everything to do with it, and there is no skirting that. So if you're looking at any of these for how can I improve, how can I be a better person, or, you know, I have this real deep judgment towards somebody, you know, that's racist. That just sends me, sends me crazy because I have no tolerance for racism at all, like to a really emphatic degree. And if you could look at the Akashic records, well, maybe in a previous life, you were in a situation where maybe you were the, um, you had to oversee slaves or in some, the house helper, or in, you were in management and you felt like the employees or whoever you're you were, you were over were being mistreated, but you had a boss of over you that was setting those standards. It was only your job to carry them out. And you did it as kindly and compassionately as possible, but you disagreed with what was going on. And that carried on into this life and you still have zero tolerance and how that could serve you is maybe you are a real advocate for equal rights. Maybe your compassion is touching lives because that's what this life is about for you. So when you want to explore your personalities or past lives from that perspective, how can I, how can it make me a better person? I think that the universe fully supports that. I've been absolutely amazed too at how much information is loaded up in that little astrological wheel. It is amazing. And what I've told people in these readings I've been doing is basically is there enough information here? You know, do you not have enough to work with here that we can stay pretty busy? Yeah. Then if you get the internal prompt intuition to get something else to add to it, absolutely do that. But first make sure that you're working on the core stuff. Yeah, it's all about you. It's not about somebody else. It's all about you. And that's a really good point. With Even with the astrology chart, with all of these tools it requires you to be willing to take an honest and open look at yourself and look at your lesser qualities, your shadow side, that's not always easy to admit. So if you, are, if you have a hard time with that now, the universe probably is not going to welcome you into the Akashic Records until you can look at this and say, okay, you know, 
I've got some serious issues that I need to work on and I'm willing to do that. Really embrace them. That's not an easy thing to do. And you have a partner or a friend or a family member, most likely, that can call those out for you really well. (laughs) (laughs) Whether you like it or not. (laughs) So those are some hints, just some ideas maybe as to where you can go looking for information. But I think the best place to start is right here now with what you have, what just rubs you. And that's probably a good place to start. All right, folks. As always, we love seeing and hearing from you. Again, you can get us at Majana at lifeafterliferadio.com. Thomas is doing astrology charts. If you want some glimpse into that side, contact him. You can get him at Thomas at subconsciousmindmastery.com is a good one, which happens to be another podcast right along with fun astrology every morning. I feel like Paul Harvey. Stand by for news. <laughs> and <laughs> In instead of namaste, we'll say, I mean, instead of good day, we'll say namaste. namaste.